Hi everybody, welcome back. I'm Diego Alonso from DiegoAlonsoMusic.com. Today I want to share with you a few very simple practice strategies that you can use right now in your own practice that will help you accelerate your progress and minimize your chances of getting injured. I'm going to highlight a few scientific articles that talk about these strategies, but I'm also going to demonstrate how I incorporate them in my own practice so that you have an idea of how you can do it yourself. So the basic idea is to take frequent breaks during your practice session and between practice session. But how long the breaks are, what you do during the breaks, and how often you take them will make these strategies work or not. The first strategy is to use micro breaks in your practice. These are just two to 10 second pauses that you will use between every one to three repetitions of a passage. Now that passage should be short. What you want to do is isolate a challenge spot. So one spot that you're having, it could be a physical challenge, like a mechanical challenge, memorization, or maybe an expressive challenge. Whatever it is, just make sure that the passage is very short. What I'm going to do now is do a close up of my guitar and of me implementing these micro breaks into my practice so you can see exactly how, uh, how they're done. I'm going to select a passage from, uh, from a piece by Vicente Amigo. It's called Sia y el Tiempo de Farruca. And the phrase that I'm referencing is at 3 minutes and 53 seconds. So if you have the recording, you can check that out. Uh, and now in my case, I know what my challenge spot is. If you don't, you can, what you can do is just play a phrase until you run into a challenge spot. So the same, it's going to be the same strategy, okay? So first, pick your, pick your phrase, pick your short passage, and, uh, and then I'm going to play it. So I'll show you real quick. I'll do it slowly. All right, I've run into a mistake. This is my challenge right here. What's the error? The first, the first step in the micro break is to hold the spot where you made an error. Okay, and now I'm going to analyze this during the break for errors and for successes. So actually, I like the tone in general for everything else. I just have two mistakes. It's my second and third fingers, right? So what I do during that break, I analyze it. I'm going to make an adjustment. I verbalize what the error is, two and three or two high. Now I'm going to make an adjustment, bring two down and three down a little bit, right? So I had a little bit of, uh, of imprecision there, right? So now next, I'm going to in position, I'm going to play the chord so that it feels correct. I want to try to memorize what that feels like. Okay. Now, next, I'm going to take my hand off. Literally, I'm going to reset, totally take a break. Okay. And now I'm going to try again. When I try again, I'm going to think about what it sounds like and I'm going to think about my correction. Okay. Right. I've made the same mistake. Two and three are still too high. That's okay. I'm going to adjust it. Again. Okay. Pause. Rest. Do it again. A little bit lower on two and three. Now that was pretty good. I feel really good about that. I like the tone. Okay. Rest. Let's see if I can validate that. That felt pretty good. Two times. I'm going to do it one more time. Felt pretty good. Now I'm going to do something a little different. Uh, I've, I have had successes. I've corrected the challenge and I've had successes. So now I want to actually do what's called a variable practice. So I'm going to change a little bit of the way that I do this. So I'm going to add a little volume. Uh, a little too high. Let's try that again. A little volume. Okay, that was pretty good. I'm going to do it really quietly this time. Felt pretty good. I'm going to do a crescendo. So quiet to loud. Oh, that was way off there. Third finger. Okay. All right. So let's try that again. So third finger. That felt pretty good. One more time to validate it. Okay. I've done a few variations. So now that's it. I'm done. I'm not going to keep doing that at all. All right. I have done. I'm done with that one. I will come back to it later in my practice session. Okay. I like to look at my challenge spots at least two times in my practice session with some space. I'm going to tackle a couple of other challenge spots first. So I just showed you a success, right? What happens if I don't get it? So let's say back to the beginning, you know, my second and third fingers are still too high. Let's say I've done that. I rested. I figured out my solution. I tried again. I'm still getting too high, right? Now what I'm going to do is slow it down. What you will have noticed from the previous repetitions is that I didn't slow down anything. I tried it at tempo. So if I make a mistake, now I want to slow down. Okay, if I, if, sorry, if I keep repeating the mistake, I want to slow down. So I, I'm going to do this. I'm going to aim, right? Like hitting a nail with a hammer, All right? Rest, do it again. 
feels pretty good. Now let's try it a little faster. A little too high still, so I might want to back up. Slow down a little bit. Too low, I overcompensated, so that's gonna happen as well. You might you know, overcompensate uh, your correction. That's fine, just keep correcting it. So I was too low, so I need to go back here. Again. All right. I'm increasing my tempo because I think I got it. All right, I'm back up to tempo. And then once I get it, I'm gonna do what I did before. I'm gonna vary it a little bit. So vary my dynamics, quiet to loud, loud to quiet. I may vary my tone. I may move my right hand left and right. Uh, lots of different things to create variability. Obviously, tempo is another way of, of adding variability in your practice, okay? There are three main physical benefits to using micro breaks in your practice. The first one is that you will obviously get better at developing your physical skill. The second one is that by taking a rest, just by taking your hands off the guitar for a second and resting, you're gonna release a lot of accumulated tension, which is this article by doctors Chen and Ackerman show us, help us lower the probability of getting injured. And finally, the third benefit is that it increases our practice and performance stamina. Obviously, if you take your hands off the guitar and rest for a second, that simple release of accumulated tension will allow you to practice for a longer amount of time without getting burned out, without getting tired, and all that kind of thing. Same thing for performance. There are also some great psychological benefits to using micro breaks in your practice. The first of which is that the micro break itself, that rest time itself, is actually where the majority of your learning is gonna occur. It's not necessarily during the repetition, which is super fascinating, right? Performance psychologist Noah Kageyama from my website called thebulletproofmusician.com, which you should definitely check out. I'm gonna have that link in the uh, notes below. He pointed out a research article in his blog that showed exactly the same thing, that rest time between the task, between the repetition of a task, is where the majority of learning occurs. What ends up happening is that we basically just give our brains time to assimilate the information that we just did. If we just keep repeating, 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 we're not really gonna have time to assimilate until the very end when we've accumulated in essence, an average of right and wrong repetition, almost right, almost wrong, and we're gonna just, we may or may not advance, right? That rest time allows us to decide whether the repetition was right, whether it was wrong, assimilate that, and then when we go into our next repetition, we can access from the correct pile. Right, almost right, needs correction, etc. okay? The second psychological benefit is that we've just taken a deep breath and given our, our brains a, a second to just refresh, reset for a second, right? So that refresh is gonna allow us to then come back and concentrate at a higher level once again. We're not gonna be burned out. So at the end of the day, we're gonna have a much more efficient practice because we've rested our minds as well. The next strategy is to use what I like to call movement breaks during your practice. These are just two to three minute breaks that you take roughly every 15 to 30 minutes during your practice time. And the purpose of these movement breaks are to literally move, just to get your body up, to get away from your instrument mentally and physically and move your body a little bit. The way I recommend using movement breaks in your practice is to actually set a timer. I would start out with 15 minutes if you haven't done this kind of thing before and just experiment a little bit, see how you feel. If 15 minutes goes by, uh, the alarm goes off and your body feels good, you're still mentally you know, uh, able to concentrate at a high level, try another five minutes, another few repetitions, and then take a break. When that timer goes off, what you wanna do is put your instrument down, then literally stand up and walk away. Or if you're already standing, just take a walk. Just go move, just get some movement in your body. The idea is not to stay seated. The worst thing you can do is take a break and stay seated again on the computer. Don't do that. Just you know, get up, walk around. Uh, one of the things that I like to do, which I highly recommend, although you don't need to do it, but I highly recommend doing some really light calisthenics, you know, toe touches to stretch out your back because that's the first thing that goes if we're sitting or standing for too long. Um, I do lots of other things, like I'll do uh, some crunches, some abs, I'll do some single leg squats, jumping jacks, uh, light stretches, I'll stretch my arms out, my shoulders, that kind of thing, just my hands just really lightly. Anything that just to get the blood flowing and to get um, the muscles moving again. So try it, give it a shot and see if that works for you. There are two main benefits to taking movement breaks during your practice, and I think they're pretty obvious. The first one obviously is to reduce your probability of getting injured. In this article on musician-related injuries, physical therapist Hope Hampton stated that postural pain is widely experienced by all musicians due to prolonged sitting or standing in one posture for hours on end, which is amplified in players who hold their instruments asymmetrically or have arms elevated during playing. The other benefit to taking micro breaks is just basically your muscles are gonna be rested. You're gonna be fresh, you're gonna be ready to start again, so you're gonna have more stamina, and you're gonna be able to tackle any challenge spots that you had, again, much more efficiently on a physical level. 
As far as the psychological benefits are concerned, there are two main ones that stick out. The first one is that we take advantage of spaced practice and retrieval practice for memorization. So space practice is just that space that we have that time between the tasks that we're doing and retrieval practice is trying to recall the information. So having a little bit of space allows us to forget a little bit of what we've done. And when we try to retrieve or recall the information, we then have to make more effort in order to recall it correctly. That effort of recall, as these articles by psychologists Sean Kang and Nate Cornell point out, are what result in better long-term memory. The second benefit is that it obviously allows us to decompress even more on a mental level so that when we go back to whatever task we're working on before the break or when we prepare to do another task that's not related, we are able to concentrate at a higher level, we're not burned out, we're ready to go again, okay? So there is one warning though. You don't want to get on your phone, you don't want to get on social media, no YouTube, no Facebook, Instagram, all that stuff that uh, ends up causing problems. It actually doesn't allow us to decompress like this article by Dr. Stony Brook shows. So try to avoid that so you don't waste your time and so that you can actually get away from anything that you're doing work-wise, technology-wise. Just, you know, breathe, relax, enjoy that time, and then go back and be refreshed. The third strategy is to use long breaks. So the idea behind this is that you want to have at least 30 minutes between your practice sessions. Now I know not everybody has multiple uh, time, multiple sessions during the day. If you just have one practice session, that's perfectly fine. Uh, if it's 30 minute session, that's great. If you think that you only have one hour to practice, think about maybe splitting it. Maybe can you do 30 minutes uh, you know, early in the morning and the 30 minutes late at night? Think about it. If not, fine. But if you can split it up, that's gonna be ideal. And I'll explain that in a second. If you have two to three practice sessions, same idea. You know, at least 30 minutes between practice sessions. Um, I, I don't do that. Uh, 30 minutes is not enough time for me because I've got other things going on. The way I do it, I have one practice session after breakfast, one after lunch, and then I have a very short 20 to 30 minute session before I go to bed roughly an hour before. So think about doing that. If you can split your session, if you have one session, you can split it. Or if you have two or three, think about making one of those sessions uh, occur in the evening. There's quite a bit of research like these two that suggest that working on a task before you go to bed obviously sleeping on it, actually helps boost your memory consolidation. So if you're able to work on a session at night, think of that, maybe that could be your first session. That's kind of the way I do it. So my evening session, my 20 to 30 minute session, is dedicated to setting up the next day. So I usually pick my top four or five challenge spots from one to two pieces, and I will go through them very deliberately the way I showed you during the micro breaks uh, demo that I did, and that's it. Put my guitar down, sleep on it, about an hour later I go to bed, and then that's what I work on the next day. It's not necessarily the first thing I work on, but it is something that I work on the next day. It may or may not be the first thing I work on. So think about that. If you can make that happen, great. If not, don't worry about it. Still, time is, is definitely one of the things that help memory consolidation. So if you can't have an evening session, it's really no big deal. If you can have it, it's kind of a bonus. Okay, so the physical benefits of long breaks I think are pretty obvious. Once again, we're getting away from the guitar, we're being able to decompress, rest the muscles and all that stuff. So we don't need to go into detail. It's really just the same thing that we talked about before, which all of helps reduce the probability of injury and it just keeps our muscles, our hands, voice, whatever, fresh for the next session. In terms of psychological benefits, we have the same benefits that we had uh, earlier in the other sessions, but just even better. Right? These longer breaks allow us more time to assimilate the information. So again, remember learning occurs in the rest time, not necessarily during the test time. So this is longer rest that we can use to assimilate and learn more, okay? The other thing too is um, that deliberate practice, like Dr. Noah Kageyama points out, can be very mentally exhausting. So this is where you're spending time solving problems. You're very deliberate, very conscious about you know, finding out what's right and wrong, fixing anything, adjusting anything that's wrong, that doesn't sound like you want. That, that takes quite a bit of mental effort. It takes a lot of concentration. So these longer breaks, again, give us a chance to decompress from that so that when we're ready to go for the next session, we are much, uh, much fresher. The last strategy that I wanna talk about is patience. I know this sounds super simplistic at face, of course it is, but I'm mentioning this strategy because I honestly think this is the most important one you know, we, we want to learn Recuerdos de la Alhambra, or we want to learn Guajira de Lucia, or whatever it is, and we want to learn to play it in like a month or two months. And the, the truth is that just that it's not going to happen. It doesn't, it's not going to happen like that because these are high level skills that take time to develop. There is a myriad of information out there, like these two articles, that show that memory consolidation happens over time. And there's really nothing we can do about that. You know, uh, we need sleep, 
in order for memory consolidation. We need time and we can't rush either one of those. Uh, so once again, please be patient. I think the biggest problem uh, with not being patient um, is that not being patient or being in a hurry, it's the antithesis to progress. Uh, it makes us it makes us want to push our bodies and our minds way beyond their limits. Uh, the result is we get injured. I, I have been injured many times because in my earlier years, I would just push and push and push and try to learn faster and try to you know perform uh, faster than really I should have. And the irony behind this is that uh, when you're patient, you get your results faster. So one thing that's related to this is I would suggest with this whole patience category, I would suggest having what are called process focused goals rather than result pro uh, focused goals. So result focused goals are I want to play, mm, I want to play Leyenda, right? Asturias. I want to play that. Fine. Uh, Process focus goals are what am I going to do today in my practice session in order to start working on Leyenda in Asturias, right? That's my goal. I'm no longer going to be worried about my result, which is playing Asturias. I used to do that. I used to think, all right, I want to play Asturias. I'm going to be able to do this like in two months or three months. And I would push like mad to try to get the thing done in two to three months. And you know what? I would do it, but it would sound like crap. It just wouldn't sound very good. It was not, it was like at a bad performance level. When I started focusing more on my process rather than my result, I ended up getting my pieces done in a shorter amount of time at a high level. So it was really cool and really unexpected. And, and I think the best part is it was way more enjoyable, like much more fun to be working on music today and, and, and seeing the, the results of my one practice session, seeing how I advanced, I solved challenges in one practice session, it was more expressive, whatever, whatever it was, that was way more gratifying. And I kept doing that, kind of like working out, right? So, you know, think about that, try it, process focus goals, forget about your results focus goals uh, for now, just have it in the back of your head, but just focus on what you're gonna do today and maybe tomorrow, and that's it. Just to recap, we've got the micro breaks, which are uh, two to 10 second breaks, every one to two repetitions. We've got the movement breaks, which are two to three minute breaks, roughly every 15 to 30 minutes. And then we've got our long breaks, which are a minimum of 30 minutes between rep between our practice sessions. Uh, finally, of course, patience, we just talked about that, but please try to inc include these into your practice session. You can do that today, they're, they're very simple to do. Uh, and I guarantee you're gonna see results over time. Remember to be patient, you're not gonna see the results in a day, but guaranteed you will see them like three to four weeks if you are consistent with your practice and if you do implement these strategies in your, in your practice as well. Obviously, these are not the only strategies that uh, will help you improve faster and will minimize your injury. One of the main goals for this channel is to, uh, to share with you a lot of information on practice strategies. So if that's something that you're interested in, remember to subscribe. Also click the notification bell and select all so that you know when I post something. And you could help promote this channel to other musicians interested by obviously sharing it, but simply by clicking the like button. So if you got value from this video, that would be super helpful. Okay, thank you once again, and I'll see you in the next video. Bye-bye.